Though magic has amazing spectacles and has seemingly impossible feats, there are things that even magic can't control. What's worse than fooling the audience is <laughs> them saying, well, I saw that ghost talker. What a load of crap that, that was. That was what I was going to say. What a load of crap that was. <laughs> like, people don't understand Bluetooth technology and the little camera he's got in his, in his lapel. And he goes, I saw three of those cameras in the, in the ceiling while I was waiting for the show. And, I, and this was in a TripAdvisor review. So that means the whole world gets to see it. And he gets to give us a terrible two-star review for being wrong. OK, so now here's the dilemma. Do I just let it go? Do I just let it go and move on? Well, I, I did respond and I said, hey, you, guys, you have free tickets to come back. You can come in before the audience does and I'll give you the ladder so you can go up and show us where the, the microphones are. And you can, the have cameras. Full, you can have full look at what I'm wearing and show me where the cameras are I'm wearing. And then you, know, you can remain in the house while we bring in the audience so that we're not actually putting up the cameras after or whatever. I never heard from him. You know. That's what I was going to say. But it's, the, it's frustrating. The that, that is one of the biggest challenges is people thinking they know how things work and it's a very simplified idea. It's ca cameras would be real simple. Yeah, and like I was saying <laughs> earlier, technology could eventually completely destroy yeah. the art of magic yeah. because they might not know how it works, but the problem is they think they know. And so therefore, there is no happy suspension of disbelief because yeah. well, it's obvious they're using Bluetooth technology. We had one person think that everybody was a plant. Yeah, one Except lady for her. gave us a terrible <laughs> review. Worst show I've ever seen in my life. Her name was Nurse Ratchet. I'm not <laughs> kidding you. That was her handle on TripAdvisor. <laughs> and she, it's personal, right? And, and she said everybody in the room <laughs> was a plant, including the people in the front row that stood up and started the standing <laughs> ovation. She's a very angry, miserable person. <laughs> I hope she's not your nurse. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's what we're up against. Close all the doors on all the working theories in the audience as far as how they're going to think it's done. And I did it tonight with, is the blade actually making contact with flesh and bone? Is there any way people in the audience can give me signals to tell me where you're stabbing that doll? And so you gotta close all the doors on all the active working theories in the audience. And I guess it comes with the, court, the, time, uh, the, it comes with the job, but the unfortunate thing is, is I'd rather not have to close all the doors because it takes time. And it, it drags out and makes the segment longer. But you, know, you gotta pass the hoop over the girl to show that there are no wires holding her up. You know, otherwise, that's what they're going to think. And so that, that is a challenge. Give it up for Sean Paul and Julian. Thank you very much. Uh, good evening, everyone. I'm fascinated and have a passion for all things intriguing, right down to our selection of pets. Now, don't get me wrong. Dogs and cats are wonderful. But 15 years ago, my wife and I adopted Frankie. <laughs> Show them how things work here. We're like a little family here. You're our baby, aren't you? That's right. Pretty lady next to you, that's my wife, and she's your mama. Yep. And I'm your daddy. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, I mean, I don't think I've ever felt more sick to my stomach and more scared and nervous than I did in that moment right there. On and stage? Yeah. yeah. Okay, because I'm standing there just waiting nervously. We were the first act of, <laughs> that they were taping of that entire season. I'm about to do this act with a six-pound primate, and all bets are off as to what, what's going to happen when he comes out. That's a challenge. We're in a foreign atmosphere. <laughs> like, in this theater, we make sure we blind him with, his, with the spotlight, keep the lights low, yeah. or he's going to start flirting with these girls in the front row and forget about the act. Yeah. And so that was a very real daunting thing. And I got through the first line, which is like, you know, good evening, everybody. And I managed to do it without stuttering or my voice cracking. So that was good. And then Julie walked out with Frankie. <laughs> Frankie got real puffy and his eyes got real big. And he looked around as if to go, holy crap. And he sat down and he was locked and loaded 
and his performance was pretty close oh, to yeah. airtight. Yeah, he was ready to go. But I mean, I'm, I've worked with him for 15 years. I'm used to just watching his behavior and speeding up and slowing down my delivery based on how quickly or slowly I think he's gonna respond with a slap of the bell or the buzzer. But he was, he was very focused, thank God. Yeah, oh, working with animals is not easy, <laughs> for sure. If it was just her and I and doing the ghost talker thing, that'd be fine. We were using a live monkey. That's a ticking time bomb. And, uh, you know, it was great. Frankie did amazing, but I didn't know that that was gonna be the case despite doing everything we could possibly do within our power. Many, many years ago, I think 07, we did Sabado y Gante with Don Francisco with a viewership of eight billion people. And the thing is, is we went out there and did this act and I had my whole script translated into Spanish. And Frankie knows the act so well that if I, if I have He's little smart. cues, if He's... I have little cues for his punchline, I don't have to give him the cues. He knows that if I say, why did the monkey fall out of the tree? He knows to just, you know, play dead because he was dead. I mean, he just understands He knows stuff. English. Yeah. So I get out there and here's the, the cameras and I start doing my act in Spanish and Frankie went like this. He looked at Julie. He was like. He was like. What the he's hell the is he saying? He's I don't the, understand him. He's in the middle of us. He, and Sean didn't notice because he was going through his script and I was just waiting for the, the cue and Frankie was looking at Sean and he just very slowly <laughs> looked at me like, are you getting this? He's gone off the deep end. <laughs> he just, yeah. what is coming out of his so mouth? So that, that one got derailed pretty bad, you know? Yeah. I've got the, the whole show running on computer, so this computer controls not only the sound, but the lights and the video, everything, and I have control of it from the stage for every point of the, the show. So I have to load up a couple of different programs. So this is the work light. You can see the lights just came on over here. Uh, and then I need a different program for music and um, uh, video and you know, uh, have you ever heard windows make a little error noise? <laughs> yeah, well every once in a while I'll be on stage and I'll hear that beep beep and I'm, I know that that's the sound of my my uh, software crashing and I'm the only one in the building that knows how to reset the system but I'm out there on stage. So that's just one of the many trials and tribulations I deal with. These guys are all wearing radios so that they can, if they have an issue getting people in, uh, they can neutralize it because some people come in and maybe, you know, it's a couple and they've been fighting or they couldn't find a parking spot or whatever and they're in a bad mood. We come in and we try and neutralize that and get them into a happy place as quickly as possible. And so these guys, we had to create a box office. You know, nine years ago when we started this, just having our own box office was a challenge and being able to process credit cards over the internet and, and things like that. I mean, this has just been, because prior to this, we just did the show. We just worked for somebody. All the infrastructure was there. It wasn't our problem, but we had to create all that. And these guys, I call these guys the A-team because they all work together so well. I mean, it's been years that we've been working together, and when something goes bad or we got somebody that was angry because they had an unpleasant experience, we sit down at the end of the night, we talk it through, we try and figure out how can we make sure that never happens again. And you're right, picking people. The guy I got for Voodoo tonight, I had that spotlight in my face. I couldn't see the look on his face. And that's a huge part of me qualifying who's gonna come up there. You can tell, just a, a little smirk, or, or maybe they don't wanna make eye contact. Nope. Nope, move on, get somebody else. And it's, it's just knowing how to artfully dodge them and, and, and decline having them come up on stage and not have the whole room turn against you or, oh, wonder why he, you know, he couldn't get that guy up on stage or, or whatever. Or you have kids raising their hand and you can tell by the look on their face they want to come up in the worst way, but it's like, you don't get it. I'm about to get stick pins in a doll and hurt somebody. And if I do that to a 14 year old boy, they're gonna hate me, you know? Or a lady wants to be a part of the voodoo thing. It's not funny to watch me inflict pain to a woman. A guy, totally fair game. And these are the things that, you know, literally take decades to really kind of learn the, the nuance as far as what an audience is gonna like, what's gonna get them on your side, and what's gonna have them turn against you. So what is magic all about?
I'm trying to take them take them somewhere the with the storyline and, and also I'm trying to take them to the edge of their seat, you know, just like a good movie would, you know, except this is this is not CGI, it's happening right in front of you. Somebody's on stage, they're freaking out and we're all having a great time. That's really what it is about to me. It's not about fooling people and making them feel dumb. And it's always dudes who mirror, no, no way. Girls are into it, they're like, there is something more. <laughs> That's how you should be. That's how I am, I love magic. Look at my friendly open face. I sit in the front row, do I volunteer? You're damn right I volunteer. <laughs> A magician drops his fake thumb, I didn't see nothing, I wanna believe. <laughs> in a non-magic world all day. Make it magic. Finding extraordinary things in everyday life and building connections, you know? Um, and finding a way to get outside of your normal everyday life. Uh, Picasso said the purpose of art is to, to wash the dust off of our daily lives. And I kind of think about magic in similar terms. This is not something you see every day. But I am probably one of the biggest skeptics you are ever going to meet. So when that happened, um, I just, I came unglued. I, it was just really like amazing for that to happen. And especially to me, out of all these people in the room, I was just like, this is amazing. Magic is when you step into this world and you know it's not real but you choose to believe it's real and you choose to experience that amazement and wonder. And to me, that's what magic is, that feeling of amazement and wonder and what if. You never understood why we did this. The audience knows the truth. Solid all the way through. But if you could fool them, even for a second, then you can make them wonder. And then you, then you got to see something very special. You really do. It was...